What's going on? I've decided I'm going to do a video on gear. For this video, I'm going to show you the, the gear that I actually do use and um, yeah, like why I use them and when I use them. So let's get on with the video. So one of the first things I use is obviously my camera. Now this is the A6000. I'm currently recording on the A6300. That is my main camera as it shoots 120 frames, 4K, picture profiles, like S-Log and Cine 4. Uh, it's got a microphone input, so like that is the main camera I shoot on because there's a lot more benefits compared to this camera. This is still a great camera. This is the first camera I ever got. Um, 1080p, like 60 frames a second, 24. You've still got picture profiles for photos, but not video. Um, yeah, but I just upgraded to the A6300 just because of the amount of features that it included. Um, and I plan to sell this off, but I never ended up doing it. So I've just kept it as a second camera if I ever need it, which has been use useful and is useful when taking photos and actually going out. Um, because you can have two cameras instead of one, so that's a bonus. So yeah, camera is the first thing. A6000, A6300. Really would just only ever use this one most of the time. Um, next up, I want to talk about lenses. I'm currently filming on the 18 to 105 f4 G lens. Um, it's a Sony lens. It's got image stabilized, so it's really good. It's constant aperture, which is absolutely amazing. And just the range that it, that it offers for video is absolutely invaluable. So I really love that lens. I shoot 90% of things on that lens. Um, it's just incredible, and I never really have feel the need to change. So. The next lens I use is the 50mm uh, f1.8. This is just the APS-C lens, pretty cheap. Uh, it's pretty sharp for what it is because it's prime, it's f1.8, so low light shots, really, really good. But um, again, I don't use this that much just because I find this lens can do just about everything. Um, I might find myself using this more as I go down the track, but as of yet, I'm honestly not sure, so. <laughs> Next is the Joby Grill Pod. I love and hate this thing, as many other people have said on YouTube. Um, my ball head's like really weak now, so I don't really trust it much. Um, but it's really good for vlogging and things like that, where it doesn't have to move. Um, I might switch to just like a normal Manfrotto tripod or something, like a, like when I filmed the Turbid Falls vlog, that did not phase me at all. Um, this is still useful. You can wrap it around things. It's easy to set up, but it's just not that that great and because this is one of the lighter versions it doesn't handle like this heavier setup as well as it should so yeah um love and hate this thing but definitely comes in handy next i use the dji mavic air this drone is amazing and you just have the dji mavic pro but I upgraded when this came out because i didn't need the range i didn't need the extra battery life this thing is way smaller and it captures 120 frames per second as well and it's got all like the other stuff so i just upgraded because i was like why not um and i haven't really looked back uh, i still love this thing it doesn't really phase me any issues or anything so until like something else comes out maybe but I'm, I'm probably going to be keeping this for ages just because i don't need to upgrade in my current state so yeah next is the gopro hero 7 i use this thing every now and then i'm not usually doing much action um, but the stabilization on this thing is really good. It's super small. You can put it in a bunch of places. I've got a fair few mounts that come with it when I bought this. Um, and yeah, it's it's a GoPro. If you use it when you need it. Obviously, like some things about it aren't the best, but stabilization is really good. Really good when you pinch. Um, but yeah, I end up just using my A6300 most of the time. Next, this may seem fairly small and insignificant but it is the uh, the peak design slide I think this one's the slide camera strap and it's kind of like the cheaper for mirrorless cameras kind of one I didn't need the other one and this one's pretty thin but I didn't want to get the super thin one I don't, I don't really remember but this thing is amazing um, clips on and off super easily you can put it on tripods and stuff you can have to replace the bottom plate um, it costs a little bit, but it's a really, really high quality material. This grip stuff is also super useful as it's on one side. 
um, you can use one hand to adjust these like honestly if you're looking for a camera strap by one of these you will not regret it um, and it'll probably last your lifetime so it's not an essential thing but it's a very nice thing to have and um, yeah I love it so yeah another thing uh, I can't really pick it up right now because it's so big but there'll be some b-roll on the screen um, is the Ronin SC uh, I recently picked this up this is the newest piece of gear to my equipment and uh, I've used it a fair few times since then I don't want to rely on gimb gimbal shots but they are super nice to have and that one just performed perfectly super easy to balance especially with this lens setup I just I love it so um, I use that a fair bit so yeah it's <laughs> that's how it is and looks good so and then the last two things which I'm currently using is my two aperture lights, one up here and one up here. Um, they are the Aperture ALF7 and the ALMX. Um, one's super small and the other one's kind of bigger, one's dearer, one's cheaper. The MX is the one I would go for if I was anyone. It's so small, super light and it has all the colours. The ALF7 is really good but it's not as bright. It's a bigger saucer so you will get softer light. Um, but I use both of them all the time. The Amex kind of like lives in my bag though, just because it's so small, you can just chuck it in there, super easy. So, yeah, um, that's about it. Uh, I also have the Manfrotto B3 One Tripod, really small, it's basically the smallest one and the most compact one until the Peak Design Tripod come out. I want the Peak Design Tripod, but I don't need it, so I'm not getting it at the moment. So that's what I use for a tripod, super good. The ball head on is so strong, it's never ever failed me. Super small, super easy to set up, super compact, super easy to like pull down as well. So yeah, um, but yeah, apart from that, the Rhino microphone, I don't know what it's called. I might just like put it kind of like here or something. But yeah, I use it all the time. It's basically like the Rode uh, Video Micro, super small super it's good it cuts out in, in like cuts in and out every now and then but like it's super small and that's usually during windy environments um so yeah it's microphone it makes it sound better than the onboard camera microphone so yeah that's all the equipment i kind of use on like every day um maybe less so the gopro and the gimbal uh, all you really need is a camera and a lens. Uh, microphone is, if you can buy a cheap one, like the Rode Video Micro, just buy that, like heaps of people use that. Um, a couple of lights help, like in this situation, to kind of set the scene, make it look good. But honestly, uh, you only really need a camera and a lens. Get a tripod, get a good tripod, because it will last you forever, and if you get a crappy one, you'll be forever hating using a tripod, so yeah. But apart from that, so I use on a regular day to day. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just something I want to put together real quick. Uh, more videos will be coming soon. Not sure exactly what on. I've got to kind of figure out a routine and I want to shoot some short films. So I'm going to take some time to put in to film those and edit those. Um, but I'll keep you updated. Hopefully, more photos on my Instagram at Henry Sham Productions. Um, so, yeah. Head over there if you want to see some photos. Hopefully I should post some more soon. And yeah, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.